Hi there! In this movie we show how the spike distance traces spike train clustering with both its normal and its real time version. For this we use our standard movie example which was already included as supplementary material in our 2013 Journal of Neurophysiology paper. This version didn't have sound so here we add some explanations. So these are 40 artificially generated spike trains divided into four color-coded spike train groups of 10 spike trains each. The duration of the time interval is 40,000 milliseconds and it is divided into eight subintervals of 500 milliseconds which each exhibit a different clustering behavior. In the first 500 milliseconds, the first two groups fire together with some jitter as do the last two groups so we have the pattern AABB. In the next sub-interval, the first fires with the fourth group and the second with the third group, corresponding to the pattern ABBA. In the third sub-interval, we have the pattern ABAB. In the fourth sub-interval, also half of the neurons fire together, but now it is random to which of the two groups a neuron belongs. The fifth sub-interval consists of the three clusters, a large one in the middle with 20 spike trains and two smaller ones with 10 spike trains each. Then we have one subinterval with four clusters of 10 neurons and one subinterval with eight groups of five neurons. Finally, the last subinterval contains completely random spiking. Below this raster plot, we have the pairwise dissimilarity matrices, which when we start the movie will be updated instantaneously as the green time bar moves from left to right. Here each element depicts the color-coded instantaneous similarity between one pair of spike trains. Note that all of these are measures of dissimilarity, so low values in blue correspond to very high similarity. On the left, we have the regular spike distance, which takes into account both past and future. The next matrix depicts the real-time spike distance which relies on past information only and can thus be applied while data is recorded. Both of these matrices have 40 by 40 elements, one for each pair of spike trains. On the right, we have the two 4 by 4 group versions of these matrices. Here each element depicts the average dissimilarity between spike trains from two different spike train groups. They are simply obtained by averaging over the respective submatrix of the full 40 by 40 matrix. Finally, the bottom row contains the corresponding hierarchical cluster trees or dendrograms, one for each of the four dissimilarity matrices. So now it is time to start the move. The two clusters AA and BB in the first subinterval are reflected by two block matrices containing two spike train groups each and correspondingly two clusters in the dendrogram. The transition from the first to the second sub-interval is a very good moment to pause the film in order to demonstrate the difference between the regular and the real-time spike distance. The real-time spike distance sees only the past and thus still reflects the two clusters whereas the regular spike distance, which sees both past and future, superimposes the different cluster behaviors of the two subintervals. Since each spike train group is distinct from any other spike train group in either of the two subintervals, the four groups can clearly be distinguished. We restart the movie and can now follow the transitions to the ABBA cluster behavior. followed by the chess pattern of ABAB. In the next sub-interval, while the cluster association is random, we still observe two clusters of 20 spike trains each.
Then we have three clusters. followed by four and eight. Note how the real-time spike distance tracks the firing of individual spike train groups. Finally, the random firing of the last sub-interval is reflected by messy matrices with large dissimilarity values and correspondingly no apparent spike train clusters. So for both the regular and the real-time spike distance, we have seen a representation with one dissimilarity value for each pair of spike trains and for each time instant. In the group matrices, we have already seen an example of spatial averaging. Temporal averaging is equally straightforward. First, we show the average over the full duration of the dataset. Over long intervals, the noise is averaged out, so the distinction between the four spike train groups is much clearer than for individual instants. Since in most sub-intervals, neurons from one group fire together, the four spike train groups can clearly be distinguished. Note that while each pair of spike train groups fire together during at least one sub-interval, we twice had sub-intervals in which the second and the third group fire together, here and here. The fact that these two spike train groups are more similar to each other is clearly reflected in the overall temporal average. These two groups show lower dissimilarity values and correspondingly are the first two groups to cluster together. It is also possible to average over specific subintervals only. Of course, we can combine two subintervals. This leads to superpositions of two different cluster behaviors. The two subintervals do not have to be consecutive. Here we have four non-consecutive subintervals, and once more, the average over the full interval. Finally, here are examples in which the average is performed over individual time instants. In this case, the spike times of certain spike trains. But this kind of triggered averaging can better be demonstrated in the next movie. For now, this should be enough for a first overview of how to use the spike distance to extract spatial temporal dissimilarity patterns from a set of spike trains. Cheers!